Again, I have the pleasure to talk to you about uh, HERC-5 today. And we've shown that it actually restricts two stages of the HIV type 1 life cycle. And, and, and uh, like was said, uh, this is actually a protein that is undergoing positive selection. So when your body is infected with a virus, um, your cells have an amazing ability to detect the presence of a virus. And they will produce a protein called interferon. Now, interferon causes the upregulation of interferon-induced proteins, some of which have been shown to be antiviral. And a handful of these antiviral proteins have been shown to restrict various stages of the HIV type 1 life cycle. And here are just a few of the restriction factors that are listed in red here, showing that they uh, uh, block a wide, wide range of uh, the HIV life cycle. So our lab's interested in further characterizing the anti-HIV um, type 1 effect of interferon and um, identifying novel interferon-induced proteins that are capable of restricting HIV type 1 particle production. So when we started this project, we surveyed interferon beta-induced genes for potential HIV type 1 restriction factor candidates. And that's when we came across HERC-5. Now, HERC-5 is a large 110 kilodalton protein, which is composed of three major domains. Um, the first domain is the RLD domain. Uh, the second domain is, or the RCC1-like domain. The second domain is the spacer domain. And the most C-terminus domain is the HEC domain. Now, like I said before, HERC-5 is upregulated in the presence of interferon and has also been shown to be upregulated up in vitro and in vi uh, vivo uh, in HIV infection. Now, by virtue of the HEC domain, HERC-5 is the main cellular E3 ligase that conjugates ISG15 to specific target proteins. Now, ISG15 is a ubiquitin-like molecule and is also interferon-induced. And it binds target proteins, either cellular or viral, to actually change its, uh, alter its activity or alter its interacting partners. Now, it's been shown that HERC-5's E3 ligase activity can actually restrict influenza A, as well as human papillomavirus. Now, we previously published a paper showing that HERC-5 can actually um, inhibit an early step of HIV type 1 GAG assembly by the modification of the GAG polyprotein with ISG15. And using electron microscopy, we actually saw that there was an arrest at an early stage of budding. Now, this is an E3 ligase dependent mechanism. And today, what I'm going to be talking to you um, about is an E3 ligase independent mechanism of restriction, which is caused by the RLD domain or the RCC1-like domain. And this has actually been shown to actually, we've shown that it actually restricts the export of uh, viral mRNA. So when I started this project, I just asked a simple question. Does HERC-5 actually stop virus release out of the cell? So we took cells. We either transfected them with HERC-5 and a, a plasmid encoding replication competent HIV. And what we saw is the presence of HERC-5 actually significantly uh, reduced the amount of infectious virus release into the supernatant. And we also um, further looked at this using Western blot analysis. And over to the right here is a uh, Western blot against the GAG polyprotein, where we looked at virus release into the supernatant on top there, and also looked at intracellular levels of GAG within the cell pellet. And you can see here, when we added HERC-5, we had the loss of virus release into the supernatant, as well as the loss of GAG accumulation within the cell pellet. So then, obviously, the next question we ask is, do biological levels of HERC-5 reduce GAG production? So we did a simple virus release assay, where we looked at the top there. You can see there's a virus release into the supernatant. We did Western blot. And we also looked for intracellular levels of GAG. So we started with 293T cells in the presence and in, uh, in absence of interferon. And we saw that when we knocked down uh, levels of HERC-5 using short hairpin RNA, that virus was happier. It could produce more virus released into the supernatant and also produce more intracellular levels of GAG. We also wanted to use biologically relevant cells, so we took uh, human monocyte-derived macrophages from two different donors. We knocked down HERC-5 levels, and we saw that there was an increased level of uh, GAG within the cell pellet. So I asked, well, what is causing this decrease of GAG within the cell pellet? And the first thing that came to my mind is maybe HERC-5 is causing GAG to be degraded. And we did another virus release assay where we looked at virus release into the supernatant as well as intracellular levels of GAG. And we treated with um, either amantadine, which inhibits the lysosome, or MG132, which inhibits the proteasome. And you can see here, um, when we uh, added uh, amantadine, we didn't get rescue of virus release into the supernatant, and we also didn't get rescue of intracellular levels of GAG. And the same result was shown when we treated with MG132, which inhibits the proteasome. We didn't get rescue of virus release or intracellular levels of GAG. So this uh, showed us that uh, GAG de degradation was 
most likely not a target, at least from the proteasome or the lysosome. So then I asked, well, maybe uh, HERC-5 interferes with nu nuclear export of gang-containing mRNA. And to uh, verify this, we took a construct of HIV that has MS2 stem loops from bacteriophage, and also took a construct that has an MS2 GFP nuclear localization signal. Now, the MS2 is a, a bacteriophage coat protein which specifically binds the MS2 stem loops. So when you transfect the MS2 GFP nuclear localization uh, construct by itself, of course, it will go right into the nucleus because of the nuclear localization signal. However, when you co-transfect both of these constructs, the MS2 GFP can actually hitch a ride on the um, HIV genome and move out into the cytoplasm. So here is a confocal microscopy. Green is the MS, uh, MS2 GFP and blue is the nucleus. And you can see um, when you just transfect MS2 by itself, it goes right to the nucleus because of the nuclear localization signal. However, when you transfect the uh, genome with the stem loop as well as MS2 GFP, the MS2 GFP hitches a ride in the genome, moves out into the cytoplasm. However, when we added HERC5 to the mix, we no longer saw MS2 GFP moving out into the cytoplasm, meaning that the genomic RNA was probably trapped in the nucleus. So HIV um, is uh, pretty smart in exporting its viral mRNA. It actually encodes an accessory protein called REV, which binds secondary structures of the HIV uh, genome, and it causes it to be exported before it's spliced to produce late proteins, such as GAG envelope or the HIV genome. Now, early proteins don't need to be um, helped, and they're just fully spliced and exported in the normal, uh, cellular, the normal way that cellular mRNA is. And this gives you the, your early proteins, such as PAT, NEF, and REV. So we first want, we want to see if uh, vi virus uh, mRNA uh, was affected. We first looked at REV-dependent, unspliced HIV RNA. And we saw that HERC5 actually significantly reduced the amount of unspliced RNA uh, e uh, exported into the cytoplasm. And when we looked at fully spliced REV-independent um, RNA, we saw that HERC5 didn't have a significant effect. So they sh showed us that um, HERC5 interferes with the export of unspliced RNA. So what we did next is we took uh, two constructs, which are basically the exact same. One expresses GAG, uh, GAG Paul in, uh, in a REV-dependent way, and one express expresses GAG Paul in the REV-independent way. And this is um, a Western blot against the GAG polyprotein. And you can see with the REV-dependent uh, uh, construct, as you increase more and more HERC5, you see less and less intracellular levels of GAG. However, this is not what we saw when we used the REV independent um, construct. And you can see when you add more and more HERC5, you don't get the loss of intracellular levels of GAG. So this experiment told us that HERC5 inhibits the export of REV RE dependent RNA. So then I thought, well, maybe HERC5 is interfering with REV localization. So again, this is called focal microscopy. Blue is the nuclei, um, red is REV, and green is HERC5. So for our control, when we transfected REV by itself, it was nucleolar, as you would expect, because REV is a nucleolar protein. However, when we transfected HERC5, we actually saw an accumulation of REV at the nuclear border, and we also saw an increase of REV in the cytoplasm, which wasn't seen in the control. So this showed us that HERC5 does interfere with REV localization. So then I asked, well, which domain is involved in this uh, uh, deficiency of REV-dependent export of RNA? So we did domain deletions here, and then we did a virus release assay. So at the top there is measuring virus release um, out of the cell, and the bottom is looking at intracellular levels of GAG. So for the control, we had normal virus release, normal intracellular levels of GAG. We added HERC5, we got a, a restriction of virus release into the supernatant, as well as the loss of GAG accumulation. Now, what was interesting is when we mutated the E3 ligase activity of HERC5, which I talked about earlier in my talk, we saw almost a complete loss of virus release into the supernatant and almost a complete loss of GAG uh, accumulation within the cell pellet. Now, when we took away the RLD domain, we had partial rescue of virus release into the supernatant and the complete rescue of intracellular levels of GAG. And the spacer domain didn't seem to have an effect against the anti-HIV activity of HERC5. So this experiment told us two very interesting things. First, that there's a second E3 ligase independent mechanism of restriction, and that the RLD domain is required for the loss of GAG accumulation. So um, I know we talked about this a little bit in the, in the last talk, but basically when uh, you have an antiviral protein, it's basically competing. It's an evolutionary arms race throughout evolution. And your antiviral proteins have to keep on changing to compete with the viruses as they evolve as well. 
And this is termed positive selection. Now, we started by looking at 13 HERC5 orthologs across 75 in, about 75 million years of evolution. And we actually saw that HERC5 is under strong positive selection. So here's a diagram of the HERC5 protein. And every time you see a vertical line, that's an amino acid that's undergoing positive selection. Now, what was very interesting, you can see at the end terminus there in, that, in the RCC1-like domain or the RLD domain, there's a strong degree of positive selection. And we this is just a predicted structure of the RLD domain. And in red is the area that's undergoing positive selection. We actually deleted this region from the RLD domain and realized that this was the, the region responsible for the inhibiting Rev-dependent RNA. So um, in conclusion, um, we've identified a HERC5 protein um, that uh, restricts HFE by two mechanisms. First, the RLD domain, which it, it, uh, inhibits the export of Rev-dependent RNA. And we also saw that, um, it, and previously, that the E3 ligase-dependent mechanism modifies GAG with ISG15, and HERC5 is evolving under positive selection. And with that, I would like to uh, thank my supervisor, Dr. Stephen Barr, uh, my past and current lab members, collaborators, and of course, the funding agencies. Thank you.